Warning, the information provided in this video is for educational purposes only. Proceed at your own risk. Narrow Leaf Cattail, also known as Typha angustifolia. This member of the cattail family is a perennial, meaning its lifespan is longer than two years, and it can be found throughout most of the United States and Canada. The plant grows in a habitat of marshes, ditches, and wet places to a height of four to eight feet, and it has brownish flowers that are in bloom from May to July. The flowers have parts indistinguishable, and they grow in a dense cylindrical spike about half an inch in diameter. The upper and lower parts of the spike are usually separated by a distinct gap, and the spike has two types of flowers. The upper flowers are the staminate, and the lower are the pistillate. The plant has alternate leaves, and the leaves are entire, green, rounded on the back, and not over half an inch wide. Cattails are suspected of poisoning grazing animals, but are commonly foraged by humans. Be careful of lookalikes such as daffodils or irises. As for the plant's nutritional value, the shoots contains vitamins K and B6, and minerals such as iron, phosphorus, calcium, sodium, magnesium, potassium, and manganese. The green flower heads and pollen have essential fatty acids, calories, and protein. In springtime, you could harvest the young shoots. The young shoots can be easily pulled from the rootstock. Peel the leaves down to the tender white core and eat it raw, cooked like asparagus, or pickled. In springtime, you can also harvest the young stalk. The young stalks between two and three feet high can be prepared the same way as the shoots. In late spring, the green immature flower spikes can be gathered before they emerge from the sheath of leaves. Boil for a few minutes, serve with butter, and eat like corn on the cob. In early summer, the flower spikes produce a bright yellow pollen that can be gathered by shaking the heads in a bag. Sift the pollen through a strainer and mix with a wheat flour, about a 50-50 mix. Be sure to dry the pollen thoroughly before storing. The small, horn-shaped sprouts can be gathered in late summer. These sprouts can be found at the tip of the long rootstock and remain throughout the winter. They can be eaten raw, added to salads, or boiled for 10 minutes and served with butter. Also in early spring, before they break through the surface of the mud, they can be gathered, peeled, boiled briefly, and pickled in hot vinegar. All year, the starchy core at the base of each sprout can be prepared like a potato. From fall to early spring, you can harvest the rootstock. The shallow buried root stalks is filled with starch and can be made into a white flower. Wash the root stalks thoroughly, peel the outer core to reveal the starchy core, and crush the core in a pail of cold water separating the starch from the fibers. Remove the fibers and allow the starch to settle and pour off the water. Repeat this process one or two more times and you will have a flower that you can use immediately or dry for future use. The juice or jelly has also been extracted from the root stalks. The Hopi chewed the mature heads with tallow as a gum, and the Pima Indians used the pollen to make a flour and baked it into a brownish biscuit. The pollen was also mixed with ground wheat and then stirred into boiling water and eaten as a gruel, and the tender white stalks were eaten raw. Medicinally, American Indians such as the Malachite and Micmac Indians made an infusion of the roots and used it for gravel. And according to Western herbal medicine, the medicinal part is the root. Its actions are astringent and emollient. It was used for dysentery, diarrhea, gonorrhea, and infantile summer complaints. Externally, the root was combined with elm and other aromatics to make a poultice for swellings, tumors, and ulcers. The roots can also be bruised until they become like a jelly and applied to burns, scalds, and local inflammations. As for the plant's other uses, Typha angustifolia has not been used as much as its counterpart, Typha latifolia, also known as common cattail. That being said, the flower stalks were split, dried, and used for basket weaving. The green leaves were woven into roofs and mats, and the silky down was used as a stuffing and pillows. This plant has been associated ceremoniously with water, and the dry yellow pollen was used to decorate the face, chest, and back as a body decoration. And of course, the silky down can be used in a bird's nest to start a fire, and the heads can be dipped in oil and used as a torch. Some have even used the stalk as an arrow shaft. Hi, I'm Mike from Flight to Freedom, and I'd like to thank you for taking your time out to watch my video. I hope you found this information to be useful, and if you have, please help this project grow by liking, subscribing, 
and sharing this information with your friends and family. For more information on wildflowers, visit me at plightofreedom.com. And as always, keep your eyes and ears open and your powder dry. <laughs>